Eurovision. And international annual competition. In which each country gets to submit a song for consideration. And this year, Serbia's song contains Latin. But how is the Latin? Let's talk about that today. I'm Luke, and this is Polymathy. The group's name is Constracta, and the song is called In Corpore Sano, In a Healthy Body. The expression Mein Sana In Corpore Sano comes to us from Juvenal, who wrote Orandum stud sit mein sani in corpore sano. We should pray that we have a healthy mind and a healthy body. The lines of Latin happen towards the end of the song. So yes, in corpore sano, said six times altogether. But they are said perfectly well. One of the key characteristics of the pronunciation of Latin is that it has to have the right stress accent and the right location. So it can't be corpore. It can't be... Corpore. It must be corpore. So it is stressed correctly. Now, how can we hear that? Well, that comes from the rhythm of the song when in any song, whether in Serbian or Latin or English, and the stress accent doesn't go with the beat of the song. It has a syncopated feel. It sounds a bit jazzy or it can sound indeed wrong if it's done artlessly. Here it's done perfectly well and in a standard non-syncopated fashion. So, Main sano in corpore sano, here it's just in corpore sano, uh, and it's stressed correctly. Moreover, sano has a long note on the a and on the o, and this is great because it is a long vowel. Both are long vowels, sano. So that's how it sounds to me. Interestingly, the Serbian language, or referred to more generally as the Serpo-Croatian language, or even more generally still, Bosnian, Croatian, Montenegrin, Serbian, since there are essentially four centers that the language is standardized around, around those four countries, there is phonemic vowel length. So it's great to hear it in the Latin because it, it sounds completely correct. So, sano instead of sano or something. And uh, it just, it sounds excellent in corpore sano. In the next phrase, which is in Serbian or Serbo-Croatian. Corpus is sano. Corpus je sano. Well, this doesn't work. It needs to be corpus je sanum because corpus is a neuter noun and it has to end in an um, the adjective here, sanum. So here the uh, author doesn't, doesn't know Latin. They know the word corpus is the subject or nominative form, but they're not aware of the fact that the adjective also has to change. And which is interesting also because the Serbo-Croatian language or language varieties or dialects or languages, however you want to call them, they also are highly inflected like Latin. They have different endings for different cases, meaning if the noun or adjective has a different purpose, it will have a different ending. In the case of, or in the situation rather, of in corpore sano, these inflected endings, corpus becomes corpore, and sanus, or sanum, rather, when the uh, neuter gender, becomes sano because of the in preposition. And this is called the ablative case. So the usage here isn't correct, corpus ya sano, but we are adopting these Latin words into a different language. So we wouldn't expect them to obey the same rules. Although they could, you could say corpus ya sanum. It wouldn't have changed anything in the song, I suppose. But, uh, it, you know, it's when we say all kinds of English expressions, like um, it's a sine qua non, you know, it's a sine qua non, but sine qua non is not a noun or an adjective. It's part of a sentence. It doesn't really acts like a noun in Latin, but we use it like a noun in English, a sine qua non, something at, something without which not. You know, it doesn't make sense, literally. So um, I think that's fine. And those are the rest of the lines of Latin in the song, and they sound pretty good. Uh, there are a couple things that I want to nitpick, though, just for educational purposes or for 
fun. Me sin firma incorpore sano is outstanding, especially because we have elision, or better called the joining of vowels between words. Infirma incorpore sano. So the a of infirma and the in that follows are joined together into one syllable. Main. Infirma incorpore sano. Which is correct and is an important characteristic of Latin and other languages like Italian and Spanish. If one puts a distinct hiatus between those in normal speech and says infirma in with a glottal stop, that's wrong. Latin doesn't work like that. A lot of English speakers don't really know that when they try to speak Latin. That's understandable because our language works differently. But Latin necessarily works in that fashion. And in a song, it really ought to, and it does here. So this is especially pleasing. Now for this one, it sounds a little odd, so let's slow it down to half speed. And there we can hear that it's actually pronounced incorrectly. That is, the stress is in the wrong position. Instead of desperata, it's desperata. In fact, they say it more like desperata. So the stress is in the wrong place. And also the lengths are wrong here. And that's made so that it fits the rhythm of the song. You know, that's the impact of this song, I would say, is in these final verses. And they have to have this rhythm. So... The uh, incorrect rhythm of the words is, I think, probably unavoidable given these words. One would have to choose other words instead in order to actually make it work. But I would say generally, given how this song works, how it's not particularly jazzy, it's not going for syncopation, this is simply a mistake uh, by the person using the lyrics. But, you know, these, these things happen all the time. And it's music and it's art and it's, I think, okay to sample something, as music often will do from something else and alter it to be incorrect if it were in its natural form. You know, this is the song. This is how it is. So the song is not wrong. Uh, but if these sentences or phrases were utilized directly uh, like this, mens desperata, well, that's wrong. That's not Latin. It must be mens desperata. There is uh, no form of Latin, which moves the stress accent to the incorrect or the we'll say, non-standard place. So, mens de sperata incorpore sano. Mens de sperata incorpore sano. Yeah, that's the correct spoken rhythm, and it would be the correct musical rhythm, but it's just not possible with the way that the song is arranged. So, there it is. There it is. Then, mens conterrita incorpore sano. This is pretty okay, but there's one thing that stands out to me. Latin double R is a geminated consonant, so it's longer in duration. Conterrita. So that syllable has to be long, and thus the R sound lasts for longer. Conterrita. But the rhythm of the song necessitates that it be sped through. Conterrita. And uh, the Serbian language, I believe, will freely make a flap or trill, even if not geminated. So uh, in this case, it would be, I think, maybe conterrita, conterrita, something like that. It sounds a little off, but it's not so bad. The pronunciation is otherwise fine in these few but lovely Latin words. And the meaning is quite clear. In corpore sano, in a healthy body. Mens in firme in corpore sano, an unhealthy mind in a healthy body. So here we have the adjective in firmus, meaning not firm. Infirm, just like English. Animus tristis in corpore sano, a sad soul in a healthy body. Correct Latin, very good. Mens desperata in corpore sano, a mind without hope in a healthy body, a hopeless mind in a healthy body. Excellent, wonderful. So the Latin words chosen in the actual Latin phrases are excellent. The only grammatical complaint I would have would be the sano instead of sanum. Corpus yesanum, but that's fine. Again, that's that's a phrase in Serbian, in the Serbo-Croatian language at that point. So it's, I think, acceptable that uh, sanum is not used and sano is taken from the phrase, the meme in the traditional sense. Ever since I first talked about language versus dialect in a video, which you can see here, I deliberately avoided the question of Serbo-Croatian. 
and I am going to avoid talking about it yet again. But fret not, dear viewer, for if you wish to hear me discuss at length for another 12 whole minutes the topic of whether there is only one Serbo-Croatian language with four or so dialects, or whether we should say there are four separate languages called Bosnian, Croatian, Montenegrin, and Serbian, then sign up to be a patron today. My supporters on Patreon get access to hundreds of hours of audio in Latin and Ancient Greek, as well as other exclusive content. Thank you so much, patrons. Your contributions make these videos possible. Enjoy Eurovision, everyone. Valete. <laughs>